So hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sunny, your host. And in today's video, we are going to be exploring one of the most exciting technologies in the field of artificial intelligence, that is OpenAI DALI API. So we will start by initializing a new project repository and uh, setting up the basic project structure in Visual Studio Code. And then we will dive into the heart of the matter and demonstrate how to generate images from the text prompts using the power of DALI API. And if you are interested in AI, deep learning and creative applications of machine learning, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start. And here you can see on my screen, there is a readme file, which contains the uh, what Dolly, Dolly API can do. Okay, so it's as of now, it can perform three tasks that if you pass it a text prompt, so it can generate an image based on that text prompt. And uh, it can create variations of the image that you pass it on. So that is the second part and the third one is that it can uh, edit uh, edit an image an existing image with some text prompt and text prompt and mask so these are the three things that it can do so let me show you on the its documentation page so that link is also given here so if you click on this it will lead you to that and uh, so directly it can go to image generation so you can see that these are the three things that it can do and uh, if you want you can go for a preview as well so you can click on this link and it can open a preview link for it and uh, here you will see there are some bunch of uh, uh, images are already here and if you hover on that so it can also show you that okay what was the prompt that helped it to generate so you can see there are so many examples but if you have seen uh, midi journey so you will find out midi journey is actually gives much more better results but it's okay like as of now we are just experiment again we can see that okay what kind of potential it can have so let's try okay so let's go back again here to the main uh, documentation so here you can see the uses it shows so first one is a generation and here you it's important to notice that it can generate the pixel size of this 256 by 256 and 512 by 512 and so on to 1024 to 1024 so as you can see that it can generate square images which is obvious here it's clear with this and uh, now the first example it's i think we, we are going to use it directly okay and i will show you as an as an example and you can see that uh, what when you give this a prompt it can what it can generate so these are the examples and so on so we will keep on referring this as per as per our requirement in the project so let's go back to the again uh, our repository so now few things you have to do here is that first of all get your open uh, ai api key and i recommend that if you are using it for the first time so definitely you can um, get of some few credits okay free credits you can get and uh, you can directly utilize it and uh, so for that i have already given a link here in the readme so if i click on this you can directly jump into that but you have to also have an account on that if you don't have an account so you have to create it and then you can simply click here on create new secret key and it can create it for you right now i have for dolly demo i already have this uh, uh, key already created and so i don't need this but you definitely you should do that and now what you can do is you can create a dot n file like this one as you can see on the left hand side and uh, paste this and replace this with your api key okay so uh, these are the first basic steps and uh, now let's look into the files here so dot ny already told you git ignore is nothing but it's going to uh, again it's going to ignore some like secret keys like dot env uh, contains and all the other files unwanted files which you don't want to commit on a public repository so all these things you should give it as a path here so you can see that uh, here dot env is already present and even env folder as a folder is also it's already present and some people use VN, uh, virtual environment when so all those things are already ignored here right so this is a good to have it's very basic of uh, python projects any python projects then uh, readme is already there and requirements so in requirements you will see these are the basic requirements so major one you should focus here is as of now is uh, open ai that is memos streamlit we are going to use it later and then uh, rem bg is nothing but it's to remove the background it's again it's a very simple and uh, very good library to remove uh, background quickly so that is our basic requirements and next is we have init setup.sh this is again shell script that is written it can work on windows as well and uh, provided you have git bash installed okay and if you don't know about that so again i have a video on that again you can check on my youtube where i have explained all the basic setup that is required to do that so uh, 
uh, here the three important commands are again these three important commands are there line number three line number five and line number seven so what is happening in line number three and i have also given an explanation here which will also be getting printed on your screens so what it says that you have to create uh, going to create a conda environment which uh, python 3.9 version and then i have uh, uh, I will activate that environment and then I will install my requirements into that environment. So why I do like this is because it, again, it saves some time entering these uh, commands in the terminal. It takes a lot of time. So uh, why not to create a shell script? So in that way, you can automate most of your stuff. If you know that, okay, there are going to be series of commands which should be uh, executed in a sequential manner. So definitely shell script can be a good choice or first choice for you. So that's why I created this one. And then you will find out there is a, a file called as pyrite config.json. Uh, this is not a mandatory file, but what it does is uh, pyrite is actually, again, it's a library which does a type linting. Type linting means like, uh, like it can give you some several hints, okay, which is as of now it is not mandatory or, to, or important to understand as of now. Uh, there could be a several tutorial on this one. So, but this file is there just to ignore certain type hints, which is, which I don't want, okay. And it's not mandatory to have it. So now, after, apart from that, I have a notebook folder, uh, which which will be containing our basic research that we are going to do. Uh, that means about, so I have already created uh, three Jupyter notebooks. One is for text to image, another one is for image variations. Then another one is image edits. And each of them will contain your basic reference required for that. And also it will contain the uh, basic imports that is required. So I already created it for us so to so that we can save some time. Now, uh, what we can do is we can open a terminal. So in the terminal, again, I have, I'm using git bash. So you can use other terminal as well, but there will be slightly the main difference of command as well. Uh, and uh, the major reason behind this is to because it allows us to run some Linux like commands, right? And best thing is that it comes with bash. So which is common in almost all the uh, operating systems, whether it's Linux or Mac, so it can work. So here we have bash and uh, first command we should run is to install the setup. Okay, so I will simply say uh, bash init setup.sh and it will run the setup. So it's going to take some time. So let's get back to it once it's complete. So our setup for the environment is ready and uh, everything is installed and uh, now we are ready to proceed further. So let me close that and uh, Let's go to the first trials. Okay. So here we are. So as I told you that it has some basic differences as already there for you and open AI docs link that you can refer later. So, uh, this is the basic imports that we are going to have. That is operating system, open AI and path lib for maintaining path related, uh, dependencies. And then we have a load dot N for loading the environment variable that is open AI API key. And then it is passing us to, uh, this API key attribute. So let's run this. And again, when you run this, it will ask for the Python environment to select. So we can select the recommended one that is nvpython.exe. And you can select your own if you have given some other path. So it is connecting to kernel and it takes some brief amount of time. And yeah, it's ready, it's ready. So now, uh, so this is for image generation, right? So for the image generation, we need openai.image. So most this dolly, uh, dolly related uh, all the things will be present into image class and then it has a create method okay so this create method will have certain uh, inputs that is what is going to be your prompt and uh, what will be the number of inputs that uh, a number of variations that you want to generate or the number of images that you want to generate for the same prompt and then the size of it okay so what is the size that you want to generate so these are the things that is required to be passed on to this so this will generate a response to you okay and uh, that response will contain uh, the link to the url of those images which got generated and uh, and there are some exceptions that may uh, may come across the first one is that if you just see the documentation also and i'm pasting as a comment here for your reference that uh, generated images can have a size of this 256 by 256 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 pixels and this says that it is these are the only three available and if you want to if, if you experiment with that let's say if you give some other uh, like pixel values so you will get invalid request error and uh, 
So what are the exception that you can get? You can get this invalid request error. That is in case you have a, a wrong image size and you can even get the rate limit error also. That comes when let's say if you uh, like here for a uh, free access it they give you I think five uh, um, like five query per minute. Okay. And uh, if you exceed that, so obviously you will get a rate limit error, but you can try it again after one minute or two. So uh, this error will not be there. Okay, so these are the two exception, possible exception that may occur. So just keep that in mind. So right now we can just simply go for 512 by 512 image here, and uh, we can provide the prompt value here. And also we can provide the value of N. So let's say I want to generate three such images, okay, for the prompt that I will be providing. So let's say we, uh, let's go for a, a prompt saying photo realistic image of Richard Feynman. Okay. So he's a known personality and uh, let's see, okay, what uh, Dolly knows about him. Okay. So let's run this. So it takes few seconds and you will see that it is giving you all these three URLs as a JSON uh, and the JSON response or a dictionary is actually present into a list. Okay, so let's click on each one of them and let's see, okay, what kind of results we have got. So uh, quite there, this is <laughs> the first image. Now let's go to the second one. Uh, this is somewhat better. And uh, yeah, this is almost close, but not exactly like him. And uh, if you're not satisfied, obviously you can try it again. So let me uh, rerun it once one more time and let's see if it can generate some better images or not. So this time it is uh, somewhat better than the previous case. And let me click on this. No, it's not quite there. And uh, let's see again. So you can see that it's not that great, right? And uh, let's say if this is for the Richard Feynman and uh, you can try it for the other yeah, persons as personality as well, or maybe you can try something else. So right now, let's say, uh, now we, we can save these images as well for our uh, future experiments and all. So what you can do is uh, you can import request library and uh, you can store your outcome into some sort of outcome directory. Okay. And uh, let's, let's be the, for the path of this outcome directory. Let's say we create a folder that is uh, named as outcome and it is present one directory up right now if you check whenever you open a notebook and you start running it into a folder so actually you will be into that folder right and we want to create this outcome folder to be in our root directory root of our uh, the of the project so uh, that's why i'm using this double dots okay and uh, since this folder is not yet created okay and i want this to be created so what we can do is we can use outcome directory path dot mkdir that is for make directory and exist okay is equals to true we can make so that if i rerun this it will not throw me an error and uh, let's run this so you can see it created the outcome folder here but there is nothing inside it so what i will do is uh, now we have this n value is equals to three and we want to save all these three images so we have to iterate into this data keyword and into this list so what i will do is uh, i will say for index in range and the range will be n value and we will simply say that first of all we have to grab the image url and that will be is equals to uh, response that we have got and uh, this is going to be inside a data keyword and then inside that we are going to have an index and then we are going to have a url value right so that is going to have our image url and uh, if you want to just get a proof that okay if it is working or not before saving anything so we can just check by copy pasting it and just see that if it is giving us the exact requirements uh, or the response so you can see that it is giving us a require uh, response correct and that means it's fine and now after that what we can do is we can uh, we can go for a request dot get method so we want to get those images and uh, so for that we will be passing this url to request.get and that is going to be image url and uh, then we can also specify the timeout let's say if it is taking more than maybe 10 seconds or 5 seconds as per your need so you can give us timeout as well so now this request.get will give you some sort of response okay and uh, so we should save that into some some variable now here we will call this as a request response or req response and 
now what we can do is we have to define the path where we want to save this file right so for that i will say that uh, prompt outcome file path is equals to uh, it will be into outcome directory okay so outcome directory path and uh, it will be inside so uh, right now it's a let's call this as in some sort of uh, since it's about richard Feynman, right so let's call this as a richard and uh, dot png but again so there are multiple images got generated so i will say here i index so that it can become more dynamic instead of otherwise it will overwrite the same image and then after that i will say that if request or response dot status code if status code is equal to equals to 200 that means uh, the request was correct we got the proper response without any error code or anything so now we can simply write the image so where we want to write the image with this same file path here okay and uh, next we will write this write byte as let's say output and then uh, this output file or output image dot we'll simply write this image and here we will say that request response dot content whatever the content you have got you can just save it to this particular file and else what if this is not the case so in that case we will go for a request response dot raise for the status that means if there is a 404 error or anything let's say if this url is not correct so in that case it will simply it will simply raise an error so that's it uh, let's try this code and see if we can uh, get the required outcome so let's run this so you should see in outcome we have got reset 0 1 and 3 to so it's every image is saved now and that's good right so this code works so in this way uh, whatever response you are getting so you can use the same code and you can utilize it right and uh, okay so that's it for the demo of image generation now we will uh, go to the next stages that is about image variations and image edits and uh, and once we are done with this Jupyter notebook then we will start creating the uh, streamlit app okay so that we can have uh, we can have some more user interface and it'll, it will look better okay so that's it see you in the next tutorial that is about image variation mm -hmm.